All right, so we're going to take a look at finding average rate of change from a table, equation, and a graph. And really, if you can do one, you can do all. All right, the table is easy. So remember, average rate of change, you need box. So in my case, you're going to do parentheses. Then it's parentheses minus parentheses over. So I'm going to do divided first. So you got to do divided so I can do that. Parentheses minus, I'm sorry, parentheses minus parentheses. All right, then minus parentheses. So once you have that set up, parentheses minus parentheses over parentheses minus parentheses. They're always going to give you the x values. And remember, we're going off of, what is this? Slope, right? Average rate of change. So if you go look right here, average rate of change, it says the change in the y divided by the change in the x. And if you look to the left, they give you the values. So you can see x on the bottom, y on the top. So x on the bottom, so x, and it looks like it's which x? x2 first, so the second one. So the second one is 13. So 13, and then the first one, which is 4. So x on the bottom. Then all you have to do once you put that in is match it for the y. So I'm going to go look for 13 in the table right here. What's the y value? 30. So you're going to match that to 30. Then you're going to match 4. What are you going to match 4 to? 48. Once you put it in, that's your answer. You're done. All right, so that's from a table. Then when you do it from a equation, it's the same thing. You're just going to copy and paste it. Control-C. And I'm going to leave this up here because I need it. Control-V. All right, then, you know, fix whatever needs to be fixed. Like, I don't need that at the end. All right, something has come up. All right, so once I get an equation, now that I know how to do it from a table, all I need to do is make this a table, right? To make that a table, click on the settings, hit table, and now it's a table. And now you're looking for your intervals again. So once again, I'm going to delete this. So it's parentheses minus parentheses over parentheses minus parentheses. Make sure that that's what it is and not this. This is something different. If you have this this would be wrong okay so make sure that that division bar goes over the whole thing all right so now I'm looking for again the first number if you forgot is the second X and then the first X on the bottom so second X is 11 so that goes right there first X is 3 and then match it so I don't see an 11 here oh my gosh just come in here and type it 11 is 21 and then 3, if I don't see a 3 there, just come to any number, type 3, it's 53. So once again, it works it out for you, and that's negative 4. All right, so all these questions are really the same thing, but from three different um, values. So we're going to take a look at the last one. All right, so looking from a graph, again, the same kind of idea. All right, so what's my second? So I'm going to come to my boxes here, or my parentheses, and delete all the numbers. All right, and they tell me my second one is 2. So that goes over here. And again, if you forget, just come to the formula sheet right there. In fact, I should do this. All right, so right here, the second one goes first in the bottom. So 2, and then the first one in here. And you just have to find what those matching equivalents are. So when x is 2, what's y? So when x is 2, right here, y is 0. When x is 1, x is 1 right here, I go up to the graph, y is 10. All right, so again, to read the graph, you just go to it. So when I'm finding x is 2, I go right here, y is 0, y 1. I mean, when x is 1, it's 10. If x was 7, I'd go to x is 7, go to the graph, and then y would be 40. If x was negative uh, 2, for example, I'd go to negative 2, go to the graph, and y would be negative 32-ish but they won't ask you for something in between. And that's pretty much how you do all of those questions. So you can do all of those questions relatively fast. All right. Next, common ratio and common difference. All right, so this is whether you know something is geometric or arithmetic. Geometric, you're constantly multiplying to get the next number. Arithmetic, you are adding or subtracting to get the next number. And if it's neither, then you're not doing anything. What does this say? Find the common ratio of the sequence. Okay, so I'm finding the, um, what number am I multiplying each time? To do that, you always take the second number. So the second number, because it's multiplication, the opposite is division. Second number divided by the first number. 
So negative 2. And now I'm just going to check it. What that is saying is when I multiply it by negative 2 every time, I'll get the next number. So if I did times negative 2, I get uh, negative 18. If I take negative 18 and I multiply it by negative 2, I should get 36 and so forth. So yes, that is the pattern. So the common ratio here is negative 2. What am I multiplying by each time? And if it was addition, uh, if it was... Um, let me see if they actually have that. Oh, it doesn't give me a next problem. Next problem. What if I did show example? Okay, common. So if it was a, an arithmetic sequence, it would mean the second number minus the first number will be a common difference. Second number minus the first number, which is five. So my common difference is five, meaning every time I add five, I get the next number. See, common difference is five. So second number divided by the first number if it's geometric. Second number minus the first number if it's arithmetic. All right. Distinguish between those two. So are you adding and subtracting or are you um, multiplying each time? So looking from 3 to 12, am I multiplying? looks like times 4. If I do 12 times 4, will I get 48? I don't know. Let me check. All right. So... 12 divided by, so second number divided by the first, and then the second number subtract from the first. All right, so it could either be a multiplying by 4 or I'm adding 9, one of the two. So let's check. If I do 3 times 4, I get 12. If I do times 4 again, do I get 48? I do. Whereas this one, I get, I'm adding 9, right? So this one is saying 3 plus 9. I get the next number 12, but if I add 9 again, do I get 36? I don't. So this one is geometric, and the sequence is a common ratio, and it's equal to, what was I multiplying by? 4. Okay, so once you decide which one it is, you answer the questions. All right, select an explicit formula. So remember, we talked about how we're just going to use the multiple choice so these are test taking skills we're just going to use the multiple choice to see what it is instead of doing it from scratch so the question is what is the formula for the nth term of the given sequence so these are all the different formulas the thing to remember about um, these formulas is that n is the number of terms so this one is the first term this one is the second this one is the third etc etc right so what you're asking yourself to do is when n is 1 all right when I put 1 there Will the term that I get out be 4? So if I put 1 where I see n, will it be 4? So what you can do in terms of um, putting this in Desmos is you can just copy the right-hand side of each equation for every single one. Because this we're doing multiple choice, right? For every single one so that I know which one the answer is. And I'll copy them in order so I can keep the answer the same. All right, and then this is to the power, so make sure you fix it to the power of, boom. All right, so those are my four answer choices. And now I'm going to say when n is 1, do I get 4? So I come right here, and I do 1. Did I get 4? I did. All right, what about the second term? So if I put the second one, will I get 1? So if I put 2, do I get 1? I do. And if I put 3, do I get negative 2? I don't. Okay, so A is not the answer. So now I'm going to check B, wherever I see N. Put it in parentheses. I'm going to put the first term. Do I get 4? I don't, so it's not that one. I'm going to go to C, put parentheses for where N is. So that's what I'm doing. Put in parentheses where N is and put in 1, 2, and 3, and do I get these numbers? So 1, do I get 4? I do. 2, do I get... No, I, I need to get 1, not 7. So the answer must be this last one. But I'm going to check. So again, where n is, you're going to put parentheses, and then you're going to put it on. Okay, so when n is 1, I get 4. When I put the second one, do I get 1? I do not. Okay, so that wasn't the answer, so I must have made a mistake. And it looks like, why did I put negative 2 here? It must have been 2. All right, so I'm going to check again. So if it's 1, it's 4. If it's 2, is it 1? Yes. And if it's 3, it's negative 2. So the answer is actually A. I'm tripping. So remember, all right, this is, n is just the, the number of terms. So this is the first one, the second one, and the third one. So when you substitute the first term, the first one, do I get 4 as the answer? When I substitute this for the second one, do I get 1 as the answer? When I put the third one, do I get negative 2? Okay, that's really all that you're doing. 
And then once you do that, you match it up. All right, uh, select recursive formula. So again, we're working backwards. Okay, what this one is saying, which recursive would produce this sequence? So they tell you that the first one, the first term is three. And then they're asking you in general what happens. So let me go over, because this one's not really a calculator, it's just understanding. This is saying this. When I do say, so they say the first one is that one, right? So now I'm looking at the second one. So this is the second term. So when I take the second term, when I'm looking for the, the second one, and then I subtract 1 to it, I'm going to get the first term. So what this is saying is, is negative 2 times whatever the first one was, which is this, then minus 3, is that going to give you 3? That's the question. Okay, so I'll put that in the calculator. So I have a negative 2, and again, I'll do the same thing for all of them. Negative 2, and I'll leave this part blank because that's what my substitution is, and then 3. As a matter of fact, can I, I'm just kind of going to go 4 times and then change it. All right, the second one is negative 5, and then minus 2. Third one is negative 3, minus 2. And the last one is negative 2 minus 5. All right, so what it's saying is when I put the term before it, right, that's what this is. Put the term before it, do I get the next one? So they give you the first one. The first term is 3, so you see all of this is 3, right? So when I put in that first term, so when I put in 3, do I get the next term? So I should get, when I put in 3, I should get the next term, which is negative 11. Which one of that gives me that? So these last two. So now I'm looking at these two. When I put in the term, so now I'm on A2, right? A2 is now 11. So when I put in that term and do this to it, do I get 17? So now when I put in the next term, which is negative 11, so right here, because these are the only two that are working so far. So negative 11 and negative 11. Do I get the next one, which is 17? Only on the last equation. Okay, so I'm going to say that again because it actually I'm going to do a, a different example. Uh, let's see, let me get this wrong so I can do another one. So, yep, it was the last one. Um, I just want to do another problem again. So, I'm going to copy down what it is. So, with parentheses where the previous term is. So, this one is four, this one is plus four, this one is two and three. We might as well delete all of this. And this one is 4 and negative 4. This one is 3 and positive 2. All right, so same thing as before. When I, uh, if I'm looking for the second term, when a is 2, um, 2 minus 1 will give me 1. So this is negative 4 times the first term plus 4. Okay, that's what that's how that reads. So when I look at it, when I put in the first one, which is 6, so I'm put the first one, 6, do I get 20? That's the question. Okay, so 6, 6, 6, and 6. I only get 20 on the last two. So it's not A, it's not A, and it's not B. So it's one of these two. Now it's saying when I put 20 in there, will I get 76? That's what that is. So I only need to do it on the last two. So when I put 20, oops, 20, which one gives me 76C? So this is your answer. Just that easy.